Okay. So the same motion, same chapter. It is linear motion. And do you remember this side, the velocity X component is responsible. But when the object is moving in this direction, velocity Bx negative component is responsible. In this direction, vertical velocity is responsible, but according to the axis, this is positive, this is negative, this is positive, this is negative. So this is a minus y. And here in this direction, this is Vy. Now in equation of motions, for example, the first one, the basic one, initial plus final divided by two into T. S is the distance, V is the final velocity, U is the initial and T is the time. And the next is V is equal to U plus a t. So a is the acceleration, t is the time, again v final velocity, u initial velocity. And then next is s is equal to u t 1 by 2 a t square. And the last is v square u square plus 2 a s. But for the vertical motion up and down, this equation will be V is equal to U plus minus GT. S is equal to UT plus minus one by two GT square. And V square is equal to U square plus minus two GS. Now, if the object is going down, then the plus G, if the object is going up, it's minus G for the equations. But when we have to draw the graph or when we have to write the statement, mean when we have to consider the vector property of the acceleration, here we are dealing only with the magnitude. But when we have to consider as the vector, acceleration has magnitude and direction due to its vector property. Then the direction will be given. Suppose it is given that this up direction, this one is taken positive. Then for the upward journey, the magnitude of the velocity decreases and mean multiply and the direction is taken positive upward. So minus multiply by positive, it becomes minus G. And similarly, when the object is falling down, according to this direction, it is opposite. So the magnitude downward increases but this motion is opposite to the given direction. So it's negative. So again, G is minus, but this concept is not used in calculation and numericals, only for the graphs. And the next, if the direction in the exam paper is given downward positive, then acceleration, which has magnitude and direction. Then for downward motion, magnitude of the velocity increases and multiply and the direction is according to the given direction. So it's positive. So this is plus G for the upward journey, for the upward motion, the velocity magnitude, speed magnitude decreases multiply by 
and the direction is opposite to the given direction, negative. So it becomes again positive. So when direction downward is positive, so down, up, both are positive G. But when the direction upward is given positive, then up and down, both G's are negative G. Now, suppose air resistance is negligible. Mean either there is a free space, vacuum, or the drag force of the air is smaller than the weight of the object. In these two conditions, we have to ignore the air resistance mean we have to take it zero and the drag force of any fluid is equal to six pi eta rv or sometimes it's written as crv sometimes six pi d drag constant rv so formula will be given now in the absence of the air no air resistance when the object is dropped from certain height, its initial speed is zero meter per second. And the single force acting down is the weight. And throughout the fall, we will assume that the weight is constant. And the acceleration produced due to the weight is acceleration due to gravity so G, which is W divided by M throughout the motion is constant. So in the absence of the air, weight is constant, weight is a single force, G is the constant, and G is acceleration due to gravity, and it is also called gravitational field strength R acceleration due to gravity. And the unit, Newton per kg or meter per second square. So in this situation, this is time, this is acceleration, so it's constant. G, 9.81. And this is time, this is zero, this is speed velocity. It starts from rest, mean it's initial speed zero and it is increasing uniformly. And we have done that the area of the acceleration time graph is the final velocity or the change of velocity is equal to the final velocity when initial speed zero and if initial speed not zero, then the area is the change of the velocity. And here, the gradient of this is the acceleration and area of this graph is the distance covered. If the velocity, then the area will be the displacement. And the next, this is time. And here is the distance in meter, time in second, Then the gradient of distance time graph is equal to speed. Look, initially zero. So initially the gradient must be zero and then it's increasing uniformly. The gradient of the distance time graph is speed. So this is a graph. Now, suppose this is the object it falls, it hits the ground and it bounces to certain height again. Now this height H1 must be equal to, it must be greater than the height H2 because during collision, 
sum of the energy is lost. And then it falls again. It bounces up. This is the high three and then falls again, bounces up. And in this situation, look, the height is greatly decreasing. And finally, it comes to rest on the ground. So we have to draw graph for the several bounces. X-axis, time, velocity, meter per second, this side positive, this side negative. Now, initially here, the speed is zero, the velocity is zero. It is uniformly increasing and it hits the ground with the maximum speed. Look. It hits the ground with maximum speed. It comes to rest, but it rebounds. I mean, it moves in the opposite direction, definitely due to the loss of the energy in the form of heat and sound. The velocity of the rebound, initial velocity of the re rebound must be smaller than the final velocity on hitting the ground. I mean, this velocity is large, but the rebound velocity will be small. So this is the rebound velocity. Now, after the bounce, it's moving up. It's uniformly decreasing. So we have to draw this graph. But do remember, for the downward journey, acceleration is G. For the upward journey, acceleration is G. So these two lines, A and B, must be parallel to each other because the acceleration is same, downward 9.81, upward 9.81. When it reaches this height, its speed becomes zero and then it falls. So, the speed again increases uniformly and it hits with certain speed V. In ideal case, these two speeds, this one, so this is V1 and this V2, both are equal. So both must be equal. For example, now this is the line almost equal, and then it hits the ground with some speed. Now this area is X, this area Y, and this area Y. These two areas are same because the rebound height is exactly equal to this fallen height. So upward distance covered, downward distance covered same. So the area must be same and the speed must be set. But the next time when it rises after the second bounce, some of the energy is lost. So it rebounds with a small velocity, but this line parallel to the previous because the acceleration remains same. And then it falls back to the ground and same distance. Look, this is Z, so this must be Z. So this is the fall first time. This is the rise first time. This is the fall second time. This is the rise second time. And then this is the fall third time. So all lines are parallel to each other. Okay, now we have to draw acceleration time graph for this situation. Acceleration time graph. Acceleration, meter per second square, time in second, this is zero. So look, for this motion, this one, 
the gradient of the line is positive and constant. So for this portion, the acceleration is constant and positive, and it's equal to plus G. But for this dotted line, this one, for this dotted line, the velocity first decreases, but increases in the opposite direction. So the gradient of this line is too high. So this is the negative acceleration for the short period of time. So it is negative acceleration. It's too large and for the short period of time. And then after this point, again, the line is straight, gradient positive, parallel to this one. So for this portion against the acceleration is G. Now for this line, this one, this line, velocity is decreasing and then increasing the negative direction. The gradient is negative and it's sharp line, means a steepest line. So the gradient is negative, but will be smaller than the previous because this change of the velocity is large as compared to these two points. So now the acceleration is smaller than the previous in the negative direction. And then again, the line is straight and positive gradient. So this is the graph. So it means these two graphs gradients are the negative. These two peaks are negative. Reason, because during this time interval, this one, the ball is hitting the ground and bouncing from the ground. So it is hitting with the ground. It is decreasing its velocity to zero and then increases to some negative value. So this portion is the G, this portion is G, this portion is G, but this is not G, this is other value. It must be greater than the 9.81, but the negative side. So look at the graph. So this is the acceleration against time graph for the several bounces of the ball in the absence of the air.